Hello once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher. I'm in my garage right now, and I'm looking forward to several other videos that I'm going to do with these direct current motors. And I have two of them, they're Belders, and they're almost identical. In fact, not almost, they are identical, except that this one has a base and the other one does not. Now these are also end-mounted or flange-mounted uh, uh, motor so possibly this one never did have a base but the subject of this video is to make and that is cast a, a base for this using the other base as a pattern hopefully now I have also uh, recently acquired these motor controls that look something as a matter of fact exactly like this and uh, those also will be employed in future videos coming up soon where I hook up these DC motors both to a drill press and then later to a bandsaw for variable speed and try to get the, the speed reduced. So that's what this is all about ultimately. So let's get started here with taking a look at this base. I don't like the lighting in here one bit. I got terrible harsh uh, light coming through the window. But uh, this base, die cast aluminum base, is held on to this motor with two screws, which I'm going to take out in a second. And you can see that on this one that it did, in fact, have a base on it at one time that someone has removed. I've had these motors for over 20 years. This one was used many years ago until the controller uh, went uh, kapooey. But now I've got new controllers. But let me take this base off real quickly here and show you what I'm going to do. When I was in my prime, which was two or three weeks ago, I had uh, a business called Peterson Products. I've talked about that or will continue to talk about it, but I offered 10 different projects. But one of the projects that I offered in the way of foundry patterns, these were foundry patterns, was a motor base a universal motor base because when we made projects in the school shop I required some of the kids to bring in electric motors but invariably they would bring in motors from appliances that did not have bases so this was a project that I not only sold patterns for but used in my shop and this motor base uh, when cast up uh, was more or less a v-block and it could be attached to an appliance motor either with screws but the kids generally ruin the motors <laughs> with the screws because they like to drill deep enough until they had copper shavings in the drill bed. So ultimately, I also did some strapping and I, I had a bandit tool, if you know what a bandit tool is or was. And I used to uh, strap the motors onto the base as such. Well, I don't want to do this uh, in this video. I'm getting sidetracked here. So let's look at this other base. This is the Balder base, and it's really, uh, it's aluminum, but it's, it's very lightweight. You see it's got a lot of holes in it. Uh, I could cast it solid and may uh, ultimately do this, do that, but you can see from the injector marks here that this was uh, die cast. So I've made a lot of projects recently using a casting as a pattern. There's always some problems doing that. So what the first thing I will have to do before going to the foundry is to fill these two holes. I'm just going to use clay, common children's modeling clay. Also, these uh, slots, and there are six of them, I guarantee will not release from the sand. They're going to clog, so I will fill them also with clay. And then later on, uh, with the finish casting, mill them out into a slot. So that'll be a simple uh, job. So let me go down in the basement. And uh, I think I got some clay down there. Otherwise, I got to go to Wally World and buy some uh, some clay. And I'm just going to fill that. That's all I'm going to do. But I would like to leave a residual uh, pattern there so I know where to mill without doing any layout. I think that's going to work out okay. And you see, there's plenty of pattern draft in here. That's really beautifully made, as there has to be for a die casting. Uh, also, I think that I will take this to the band center all the way around and uh, increase the pattern draft just a little bit because when they clean the pattern, the castings up at the founder, wherever they make these, there's always some flashing and they knock that off and, re 
remove some of the uh, the pattern draft, which is taper. All right, let's go in the basement. I'm in the basement, and here's the Rockwell Delta six-inch sander with the table set at uh, three degrees angle. And I'm just going to go all around this real quickly, and then. Take off any flashing. You can see, maybe you can see that it's, it's a little bit on the rough side. So, here we go. Now, at the bench, I'm starting to fill these holes, and I did indeed find some of this clay in my basement. I had some Roma Plastilina. I didn't want to waste that, but this is a this is the original Sculpey, you know. It's an oven baked clay, but I'm just going to use it as is. And I've already filled these two holes simply by pressing the clay in. And I know the foundry sand is going to stick to that, and it's going to be kind of a of a mess. But boy, that picks up the dirt fast, doesn't it? So what I'm doing here is to take some of the clay, push it in real hard against this nice aluminum plate that I have here so it'll be smooth on the back side and then on this side I don't know if I can cut it off here using a gem remember a <laughs> gem single edge razor blades I doubt they even sell those anymore oh that cut off pretty clean but yet, I, as I said, I want to be able to see where to machine the slot. So I'm going to take my finger and press it in. And I'll fill all those holes. You don't need to see that. You didn't need to see this. And then I'll see you in the foundry momentarily. At the foundry bench now, you can see I've filled the holes and the slots with clay. This is a 10 by 12 flask. This is really thin. I hope it pours okay. And I hope that the clay doesn't fall out. I do a lot of hoping. Now, I'm not going to show much of this. I'll run, uh, well, I'm going to need, it's so thin, I'm going to put a sprue on each end. So I kind of centered this. And uh, I'm not going to show much of this. Why? Because people aren't watching my Foundry video, videos. There, there isn't much interest in this. So... I'll just throw, show a few things uh, of the finished one here. That's all I'm going to do. A few shots. But I am indeed ready to start sifting the sand, riddling the sand. All right, the drag is finished, and I'm going to put a sprue on each end. I'm going to use a tapered sprue, which I haven't been using lately. A little lycopodium served generously. I'm going to make a pouring basin here, which I seldom do.
Ooh, and I'm coming out. I mean, oh, God. I'm sorry. That's extra. That's all the extra. Yeah, what was going on last night? It's been 15 minutes, and a real thin casting like that cools rather quickly, so let's see what we got. Looking pretty good. I'm going to cool it more thoroughly and then uh, I'll meet you down in the basement and we'll talk about uh, milling the slots and, uh, and the holes here. So it's a successful casting and I'm glad of it. I don't feel like doing it over. I am now ready to mill out the slots, 5 16 diameter, and I've outlined roughly with a sharpie. Again, this is not very critical, and as a great poet once said, no greater luxury hath any man than plenty of good parallels. Thank you for watching my videos, I appreciate it, and some of you guys say that I'm doing great work and all that, and I do like it when you say that, but remember, I don't really know any more than you do. I'm just an old school teacher that's muddling along, and I do not have 40 years of experience. I have one year of experience 40 times. Well, those are 516 slots, actually they're 30 seconds over to accommodate 516 bolts. And uh, it's looking good. Boy, you know, there's just nothing to this. It, it just doesn't weigh much at all. And it's so thin, I'm glad it turned out. I didn't have any cold uh, uh, short runs on there. Now, I, d I have two holes to drill, as we talked about, that actually fasten the base onto the motor. So I'm going to transfer those with transfer punches, I think. And the tricky thing is that uh, they're drilled at an angle toward the center axis of the motor. The other thing I will know in just a minute when I go back out to the garage, remember that this casting is smaller than this casting. It has shrunk. Because of that, this radius here is no longer the same as this radius. The question is, uh, will this fit onto the motor or will it be the wrong radius now? onto the motor. By the way, watch that video on my cutaway of the Versomatic. The Versomatic. You know, I don't do anything new. Everything is ancient technology, but some of you guys like that. Alright, see you presently. I'm back out in the garage, and of course I was worried about whether or not this radius would conform, and of course it, it's just fine. I can't tell really any difference between the two. So, I'm going to do these one at a time, and there's a transfer punch, and I've determined the center line here, and then by the paint mark I can tell pretty much where it, where it belongs, and just like that, and I have made a uh, center punch mark, that'll be quarter inch, I'm going to use these two hardened screws, and uh, I'm not sure what the angle is. That, that's the funny thing here. What, what is the angle so that I truly match this? And I'll, Let me show you what I mean by that. This might help you to understand the angles at which I'm trying to drill these two holes. So I have temporarily put two quarter inch bolts into those holes to show you that 
that they are at an angle. In other words, when I can't just put this in the drill press and drill it straight. I need to hold this at an angle. And uh, I guess that, well, I could just drill an oversized hole. It would probably work, but I'm going to do this. But I think I'll measure the angle, but if I can, but probably just use the Bagesse and Bagash tried and true method. Well, I drilled one hole. You can see that it's an, at an angle, 10 degree angle, and I did that in the Bridgeport mill using a 10 degree angle block to angle the work. As you may clearly see, I have a transfer screw in this hole, and I will put that screw in place. Just snugging it down, and then can you see the mark? Now I'll go and drill that, and I'll be back in a few minutes. This is the setup for drilling those holes at a 10 degree angle. That's the 1 4th inch bit. There's already a pilot hole drilled. I do not recommend that you drill and tap holes in your motor. I once had a student drill the hole so deep that he went clear into the armature. Rim shot. She's done. Now I need to remove the sand, or I should say the clay from this one, clean it up a little bit and reinstall it. I won't show that. Well there it is, just like downtown. Now you will be seeing both of these motors featured in a few upcoming videos as I rewire this. I don't think I'll show all of that, but as I mount this particular motor on delta band saws, to reduce the speed and thereby convert them into metal cutting saws. This one is going to be put back probably on the Boyce Crane bandsaw where it was several years ago till I blew out my controller. Now I got new controllers and again this is all about being able to adjust the speed on a drill press very quickly and easily without any belt changes. I've already been warned by several people that these will not work in that they just have uh, no torque at low speed, which kind of surprises me, but they are three-quarter horse, so I'll try to belt them, pulley size them such that they aren't really running that slow, but yet I have uh, a, a, the possibility of changing the speed. But this one was all about the motor base, okay, all right, and I, I'm pleased with that. I think it'll work out all right. All right, and uh, I thank you for watching. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video, I hope.